Hello, my name is Michael Ricks, Chief Executive of Providence St. John's Health Center and the St. John's Cancer Institute. For more than 30 years, the St. John's Cancer Institute has been committed to training the next generation of oncologists through our Donald L. Morton Complex General Surgical Oncology Fellowship Program. These fellows can now be found leading cancer and clinical research programs around the world. By participating in the fellowship program at the St. John's Cancer Institute, fellows will train under some of the nation's best clinicians and researchers and rotate through inpatient and outpatient surgical oncology, medical oncology, radiation oncology, as well as spending time in our multidisciplinary research labs. The Complex General Surgical Oncology Fellowship Program at the St. John's Cancer Institute is proud to bear the name of Dr. Donald L. Morton, the very man who established the Cancer Institute at St. John's over 30 years ago and formerly known as the John Wayne Cancer Institute. Having Dr. Morton's name on the fellowship program reminds us to relentlessly pursue advancements in cancer care and give back to the cancer community by training future generations of clinicians and researchers. I encourage all of you who are seeking an opportunity to learn from some of the nation's top clinicians and researchers in a setting that promotes excellence and innovation and is home to one of the most desirable places to live in the United States, then be sure to apply to the Donald L. Morton Complex General Surgical Oncology Fellowship Program at the St. John's Cancer Institute in Santa Monica, California. Thank you. Very strong clinical faculty, all of whom are really involved in research. So they get a very broad surgical oncology training, as well as exposure to the research. Most of our fellows come out with several publications throughout their time here in the two years of the program. The first year is generally uh, rotations here primarily at St. John's and we have it divided between a GI oncology rotation, mixed tumor rotation, a skin tumor rotation, and a combination breast endocrine during which time they also get a more opportunity to start doing some research and get some publications. Many of the meetings have deadlines for abstracts fairly early in the year. So soon after they start, we already encourage them to get projects going so that they can be submitted and presented at the national meeting, which occurs in the springtime. And then our focus too is just in general, high quality patient care and really learning for the fellows how to integrate a multidisciplinary team approach in the treatment of the cancer patients. So I think that's one of the highlights of our program. Uh, we can have a patient that comes in, uh, for example, a, a melanoma patient who, um, when, when I see them in clinic, you know, we may find more advanced disease. And right away we can see the medical oncologist on the same day, get images when needed, and really minimize the time the patients are having to wait, um, sort of in that limbo period where they're, where they're uncertain of what their future is going to be. And I think that really sets us apart from many other centers who have, um, you know, long waits to get into facilities. We sort of think of all of those options as we make their treatment plan. Um, I think patients feel like they're the center of their treatment plan when we do this. Um, and even if they don't see other providers the same day, um, we usually discuss their opportunities to see them in the future or, or if they you know, end up needing um, more advanced care, um, they know where to find it. We sort of take an apprenticeship model to, to training our fellows. Um, they see patients with us create treatment plans uh, independent of the faculty and present to um, the multidisciplinary teams throughout numerous tumor boards, um, conferences, and to be honest, just in, you know, in everyday clinic life, um, they're, they're a major part of the team and, and I think that's an integral part of their learning. Minimally invasive approach to, to cancer care is sort of the next frontier, I believe, and um, you know, we, we look in any way we can to provide a, a minimally invasive approach to taking out cancer while while providing a good, you know, oncologic approach. Um, and so using the robot, using advanced laparoscopy, uh, and minimizing, you know, time in the hospital, length of incision, risk of wound infections are, are all things that patients see as a benefit. I went to UCLA for medical school. I, w um, I did my surgery residency training at Kaiser Los Angeles, where I rotated at LA County, USC, and Cedars. And I, um, wanted to come to this fellowship program um, because of many reasons. One is that it is very rich in its history. It has a legacy um, in research in the sentinel lymph node technique. And the impact that this institution's made on a national level 
um, I think brings quite a bit of benefit in fellows education um, and resources um, that we're allowed. Pioneered research, which is now standard of care for breast cancer and melanoma. Um, a lot of my faculty at my residency also trained here and they are wonderful academic surgeons who I look up to. I've been here now for 16 months. Uh, again, I'm, I'm in my second year and so I, I think I've come to know the ins and outs of the program. I originally heard about this program in my quest for interviews and, and looking at surgical oncology programs because the fellowship is well known. It's got a long history um, and a rich history. It's one of the fellowships that take multiple fellows a year. Um, there's, there's four spots a year currently. In our first year we have several skin and soft tissue rotations which are not as time intensive. Um, you know, we have a melanoma specific rotation. We have breast, endocrine, pre predominantly in our first year. But we also have GI, um, mixed tumor, as well as HPB in our first year, and those rotations are a little bit more time intensive. And it's broken up uh, essentially by specialty. So one service is our program director and assistant program director, Dr. Fisher and Dr. Foshag. Um, and under that time, you follow them in clinic, you cover their cases. We also uh, have another rotation with Dr. Bilchik, uh, which is more focused on uh, GIHPB, followed by a rotation with Dr. Esner, which is mostly soft tissue and skin melanoma. Um, and then we work with um, breast and endocrine, so uh, Dr. Uh, Grimley, Dr. Fancher, who are two of our breast surgeons, and then Dr. Goldfarb, who, who's one of our endocrine surgeons. Right now, I'm on the um, GI HPB rotation and so we have a lot of um, colon cancers, we do a lot of colectomies, we also have a lot of liver uh, resections, hepatic resections, um, pancreas, stomach, we've done a couple gastrectomies in the last several weeks. Um, the previous rotation I was on was focused on skin and soft tissue, so um, several um, melanoma cases, squamous cell, basal, um, sarcoma cases interesting things about surgical oncology is that you're not limited to one specific d disease type um, and you're expected to show uh, a, a certain level of expertise in many different areas of cancer and so getting to rotate on these uh, different services and spending time with these mentors that have taken care of these their specific disease processes uh, for 10 20 30 years however long it is and have been leaders in their field for that such long period of time is of great benefit because the questions that I, I can ask, they you know have seen firsthand, um, and probably multiple times. It allows me to think about some thought-provoking questions that will impact patient care. I am very particularly interested in cytoreductive surgery and um, intraperitoneal chemotherapy, and you know it's sort of a very new arena. So I've been doing a lot of research in our databases and seeing sort of the long-term outcomes with cyto cytoreduction. Um, there are a lot of questions that are unanswered at this point, um, and we have huge databases that allow me to answer these questions. I think being able to sequence um, the treatment algorithms um, to best benefit the patients is um, of the utmost importance in, in treating the malignancies that we deal with. I think having the knowledge uh, through our rotations with medical oncology and radiation oncology um, which is part of the fellowship, is, is really aids to our understanding of how they view um, their treatment and the, their role of treatment, which is something that I had no insight to prior to fellowship and something I'm, I've, I've been extremely grateful to have some experiences with. So I think it has been very helpful to um, participate and also lead some of the, these discussions. When I meet patients in clinic or in the hospital, I often think about their care and how their care can be managed differently and I often will volunteer um, to present their case at these multidisciplinary um, meetings. After discussing their care with all of these specialists, um, bringing it back to the patient and sort of working from there, I think this provides the best um, options for the patient and make, you know, in terms of making informed decisions. In going to conferences and presenting my research, I'm able to meet, you know, experts in the field and I'm able to network and so I think all of this is great in my future career wherever I may end up. We're able to bounce ideas off each other, we're able to collaborate on research um, and I think the research side of things um, has been most beneficial having other fellows. There's obviously an emphasis placed on research um, generation in this program because again because of the history of the 
of the institution. I think my experience has been really great. I've enjoyed my time here. I think it's a, a good place where um, collaboration is, is, is highly prized. And this year alone, I'm presenting research in six different conferences, which is more than I ever expected as a first year fellow. So overall, I think this has been a, a great experience. It has a lot of um, capacity for research. We've got great mentors here. And the ultimate goal is taking care of patients in the best way we can. I was in constant awe, you know. He was a very humble man, very soft-spoken. He taught us a lot uh, growing up about dedication, tenacity. He believed that you could do anything if you set your mind to it. Um, in, in the face of failure, if you try something and it didn't work, keep going. And that's what he did with his research. The way he ran his life is he kept marching forward. My father was a thoracic surgeon and his specialty was, was melanoma and he spent 32 years of his life uh, in, in that area. And the work that he did in the sentinel uh, lymph node biopsy he transcended into uh, a number of different types of tumors, uh, including breast. He also uh, was one of the pioneers in limb salvage, uh, which uh, helped when he was dealing with sarcomas. My father always thought that creating a fellowship program was imperative to ensure the teachings of future surgical oncologists. He felt that although he was trying to find the cure for cancer, that he might not be able to accomplish that in his lifetime. So his goal was to embark on this journey to uh, put together a fellowship program that would allow the future generations to go ahead and find that cure for cancer. He was a strong believer that one of the fellows um, would be the one that would cure cancer. And he shared with our sisters that were part of the ministry here at uh, St. John's that the future uh, was in this room to go ahead and cure cancer. And he was so proud. And he was a very humble person. So uh, he embarked his wisdom and knowledge as best he could. And in the hopes of one of those people that were in the room would be able to carry on and, and find a cure. He's most known for the sentinel lymph node biopsy procedure, which he received the Jacobson uh, Innovation Award in 2008. That was something that he was extremely proud about. My dad was always a person that was up for a challenge and loved to go ahead and solve complex problems. So one of his patients asked the question that why do you go and remove all the lymph nodes when you're trying to track down where the cancer, if it had metastasized? And this patient challenged him saying, is there a better way? So he spent many years trying to, to uh, come up with a way to go ahead and salvage the lymph nodes that did not need to be removed. And that was based on this conversation with one of his patients that basically challenged him to find a better way. That's how the sentinel node uh, biopsy procedure actually started. I think that melanoma to him was the sweet spot, obviously, but uh, he, he, there's so many stories of different ways that his research uh, provided him the opportunity to work on different parts of uh, the human body to help save his patients. He thought it was very important to have that exposure to uh, many different uh, facets of it. And you know, it makes you a better uh, doctor. I think that it was something that was very important to, to him, that he could look beyond just his specialty and then guide the, uh, the patient to, to the right person and recommend the right protocols. My father had uh, surgical privileges here at St. John's and was very impressed with the hospital, with the nursing staff, uh, with the, uh, all the caregivers that were part of St. John's. And he had many conversations with the sisters that were running the, uh, the hospital at the time and they struck a deal to uh, come over 
as the story goes, that he was a, he's a very um, spiritual uh, man, and he, when he was talking to the, the sister, said, let's take a leap of faith and do this, and that, that's how it all got started. The South Campus plans have been in the works for a long, long time. So having the Cancer Institute uh, in a new building with new labs, new equipment, um, the opportunity to bring in more fellows, researchers, would make him very, very happy. Um, you know, he, he was a humble and simple man coming from West Virginia, living through the Depression. So um, this would be like paradise. It would be, <laughs> you know, I think he'd be very excited having a new institute being built. That library is there today uh, with the books that he used. So, so we have another archive over there besides the repository is the, the books that he had when he was uh, going through any of the procedures that he was doing here at the hospital. And I hope that his legacy continues and having the fellowship program named after him, it was something that was very emotional for my family, you know, to have his, um, his name carried on that way. What he would say is, how does this research help people? So what am I doing? How is this protocol going to help save a life, prolong a life, and then perhaps even cure cancer? His only regret when he died at 79 years old was he said he wasn't done. My father was a true legend in the field of surgical oncology, as well as translational investigator and pioneer in the field of immunotherapy. He was as passionate and engaged in his laboratory research as he was in the clinical care of his patients and the conduct of his clinical trials. When I think about my father and all of his accomplishments, the one that he was most proud of was the Surgical Oncology Fellowship Training Program. He trained over 150 Surgical Oncology Fellows, of which 80% are in leadership roles in academic institutions and major cancer centers. The Fellowship Program became one of the first eight programs to be accredited by the Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education in Complex General Surgical Oncology. My father's memory lives on not only in the breakthroughs he offered, but also through the spirit and tenacity that his example bestowed upon the many people he mentored who live on today. I invite you to join us in fighting the battle against cancer.